one hour PSA for that. She didn't come on this podcast and do that. She's never going back to Housewives, Yolanda Hadid. So there are people that would never go back. I don't think Tamara's return is actually that thirsty. It's just, who doesn't want a paycheck, right? But come on, Jennifer, you mean to tell me you're not thirsty? I don't know. Well, speaking of Jennifer Aiden, before we get into some other things, um, she has actually spoken out. You know, we all know she said that she was coming back to Housewives. And then we all know that she said that she was, you know, not that she wasn't, but that she was going to be returning and the headlines went crazy. And Andrew Cohen, Mr. Cohen, um, weighed in and said like, what? That's insane. And I wish Jennifer Aiden good luck. Again, I don't think Jennifer Aiden is coming back. Um, if anyone does, I think you're living in denial. Uh, she's not. Okay. So, but, uh, you know, Andy said, I wish her well, which doesn't really seem like she's coming back. I understand how you could read that two ways of like, nothing's decided, but we wish her well. Regardless, regardless, Jennifer Aiden has uh, spoken out after Andy has spoken now, as I move away from the microphone, because I'm shifting myself. Um, but Jennifer Aiden has now responded to Andy and has said that, um, I've spoke. Well, she says I've spoken with Andy. Really, girl? When did you speak with Andy? I would love to know. I'm not so sure. You've spoken to Andy in your lifetime. Sure, I doubt Andy Cohen spoke to you after this. But she said I've spoken with Andy. People are just sensationalizing what he said, just like they sensationalized what I said. Well, you did say you were coming back, girl. So I don't know how people could interpret that. Uh, she said, there's no hidden meaning behind it. As of now, no discussions have been made. And I'm very happy to hear that Andy wishes me well. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. All right, Gold. First of all, this is some backpedaling. Second of all, I don't think you spoke to Andy Cohen after all of this. I really don't. And third of all, um, you said what you said, and there's really no way to interpret what you said. And I really don't think that you are coming back. I just don't. That's my honest opinion. No offense. I just don't think you're coming back. So there's that. Does anyone feel like Jennifer clarified that at all? I don't really think so. Um, I told you there were just a few quick things with New Jersey that I wanted to discuss. Nothing major. Uh, the other thing that I want to discuss trying to think what to prioritize in case we run out of time. I think the other thing that I want to discuss is, uh, well, we, we don't know anything about Jersey. That's true. But Melissa Gorga has done uh, a chat. She had the Fudas on her podcast and um, she, it's John Fuda said, uh, you know, now that it's uh, a pause, you know, let's just regurgitate and let's talk about some of the positives and some of the negatives. And he says that the positives of RHLNJ are that you get free stuff like free clothing and uh, Rachel got some free maternity stuff. Okay. Who doesn't love free stuff? But he thinks that the negative is that they really go hard on the guys and they don't respect them as men and their careers. Rachel Food is like, well, I don't know if that's true, but uh, we got so serious and so dark. At least the guys are lighthearted and the guys know how to have some fun compared to the women. All of that is very, very, very true. So, but the point that I actually want to make, which I found the most interesting, is Messy G, our girl Melissa Gorga. Messy G has spoken out. Uh, you know, they're addressing the Jennifer Aiden, saying she's going back. And a Messy a G has said, it's so stupid. And you know what I have never here. It's so stupid. And you know what I have to say I'm actually proud of? Never has it once been said, Melissa Gorga is staying. Never once has that been said. So that should be proof to Bravo and to everyone else that it's definitely not me that talks to the people and plants the stories. Meaning Teresa's planning the stories. Jennifer Aiden is planning the stories. And it's not Miss EG. I got to be honest with you. I don't got no horse in this race. And I don't got no side. But I uh, I, I agree with Messy G here. Never once has it been said that Messy G is returning. And uh, do I think Messy G speaks to the bloggers? I really 
don't. Let's not give her too much credit for being innocent. But, and that's, again, I just go back to like, I never, ever, 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 ever understand why Jennifer says I'm returning. It goes to the same thing. I don't understand why Teresa would speak to the bloggers. Speaking to a blogger, and I don't, there's no insult to a blogger. I'm just saying, putting out a narrative just to spin it and have it out there. If it's not true, what is the point of that? That to me is the complete height of insecurity. You know what I mean? Like, that's just all it is. So what's the sense of saying Teresa's coming back, Teresa's coming back, Teresa's coming back, if in fact you're not really coming back? Like, <laughs> I am like losing my voice. I'm like working too hard. Um, But do you know what I'm saying? I understand, listen, I do understand a little bit of that. Speak it, put it out into the universe, see everybody say, oh, we love Teresa. And then it kind of like will it into existence. I get that. I, I, I get that, but I just think it's such a waste of time. So I actually agree with Melissa on this. We haven't heard that Melissa was definitely coming back. I mean, look, taking the pictures with Margaret and Fessler and Dolores and Fuda and Cabral and trying to say, here's the future of New Jersey uh, without saying it and that it's everybody except Jennifer. I mean, it's and, and Teresa, it's kind of the same thing, Messy G. But I do agree with Messy G. Um, I agree that she's not speaking to the bloggers like Teresa does. And uh, you do never hear that she's coming back. Anyway, what is the point of all of this? We have to go. But the only other thing that I thought was interesting is that uh, Crystal Kung, now that she's starting a podcast with Cynthia Bailey, um, is now on the uh, the interview schedule, um, is now on the interview schedule. Uh, and she has said that when she started, this is not really um, anything major, uh, but she's saying that when she joined Beverly Hills, she was told this is Kyle's show. And it's like a, it's like a sorority. She said she felt like she was hazed. Um, which I agree, it is Kyle's show. I said this, um, uh, you know, that I've said this before. I completely, completely agree that it is Kyle's show. I stand by uh, that Kyle is the number one housewife in the history of housewives to play the game correctly. You never see Kyle like, we, yeah, when it's Kim and Kathy, she has emotions, but you never see her doing the stuff Teresa allegedly does. You never see her doing the stuff Nene does where she thinks she's bigger than the show. You never see her doing what Bethany does where she too thinks she's bigger than the show. You just, Kyle to me is the number one for, if you want a book on how to play housewives, that's it. So yeah, Crystal, when you joined, you were told it's Kyle's show, not in like a powerful way, but in a like, it is her show. Like Kyle ain't going nowhere. So to me, to be this many seasons in and not even be in jeopardy of losing your job, which I don't think Teresa's going to lose her job, but I think we're not sure. So there you go. We got to go. I love you all. Um, and uh, we'll talk soon. And yes, New York is good and Salt Lake is good. And I love you all. And it's Saturday and you're my people and I love you. And mwah. I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for being on Patreon. Bye, you guys.